Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. 35 years after they made a beloved Hollywood classic, the legendary feud between Deborah Winger and Shirley MacLaine still makes headlines. How Deborah Winger farted in Shirley MacLaine's face causing a feud. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. The story behind Deborah Winger and Shirley MacLaine's Hollywood feud. What happened between Shirley and Deborah? Iconic actresses Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger worked together on Terms of Endearment, which went on to win an Academy Award for Best Picture. They played an incredible mother-daughter duo, but the two women weren't exactly friendly behind the scenes. Three decades later, the silence is broken. When MacLaine and Winger met to make the movie based on Larry McMurty's sentimental bestseller, they didn't exactly hit it off. MacLaine was a Hollywood veteran with three Oscar nominations under her belt, while Winger was a fast rising star after making 1980's Urban Cowboy. Other than talent, they had nothing in common. While sitting down on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, Deborah Winger was offered to play a game, which forced her to answer some uncomfortable questions. Of course, the host couldn't pass up the opportunity to get to the bottom of Deborah's famous feud. No, I didn't write about her. She wrote about me, Winger said after he said the actress dished about her co-star in her 2008 book, Undiscovered. There were rumours that you tried to pass gas in her direction. You licked her leg while she was filming a love scene with Jack Nicholson. Is any of that true? A smiling winger allowed that there was something true in there. What's definitely true is that Winger and McLean had a fraught relationship while making terms. One that mirrored the fireworks between their on-screen characters, free-spirited Emma Greenway and her cantankerous mother Aurora. Both women were nominated for Best Actress Academy Awards, but it was McLean who took home the statuette, saying, I deserve this, when her name was called over wingers that night. During the movie's production, there have been numerous rumours about the two actresses not getting along. In 1986, Deborah finally addressed those speculations and confirmed that she wasn't friends with McLean, who is 21 years wingers senior. I can't deny that we fought. We're not having lunch together today. We challenged ourselves, and when we got tired of challenging ourselves, we challenged each other. But I think there was always a respect between the two of us. That could have been the end of rumours, but McLean went on to publish a book titled My Lucky Stars, a Hollywood memoir in 1995, in which she detailed what went on between her and Winger on set. She turned around, walked away from me, lifted her skirt slightly, looked over her shoulder, bent over, and farted in my face. Naturally, such appalling behaviour by Deborah didn't sit well with Shirley, so it's no wonder the ladies were on bad terms. Winger never addressed her co-star's accusations until now. Now both sides confirmed Winger's weird behaviour. Then again, many have already been aware and loving the drama. The tension between the two star actresses off-screen was award-worthy as well. With both actresses initially having reputations of being difficult, things were bound to start off on the wrong foot. They reportedly hated each other so much that they got into physical altercations. Shirley MacLaine is one of Hollywood's legendary leading ladies, known for a range of films. She is Hollywood royalty, an Oscar-winning actor and best-selling author. She was born Shirley MacLaine Beatty, in Richmond, Virginia. She was named after a movie star, the adorable Shirley Temple, who lifted the hearts of American moviegoers during the Great Depression, as only a child star could. Her mother, Kathleen Corinne McLean, was a drama teacher from Nova Scotia, Canada, and her father, Ira Owens Beatty, a professor of psychology and real estate agent, was from Virginia. Her brother, Warren Beatty, was born on March 30, 1937. Her ancestry includes English and Scottish. Her mother famously enrolled her in dance classes at age three to strengthen her weak ankles. It was there that MacLean fell in love, she says, with discipline, music, teamwork, pain, balance and strength. 
She started dance class at age three to strengthen a pair of wobbly ankles, and her childhood years were counted off to a dance beat, five, six, seven, eight. McLean finding at the Washington School of Ballet a lifelong source of beauty, balance and belief in herself. She eagerly absorbed the lessons of her Russian-trained instructor and proved her mettle early, dancing Cinderella with the National Symphony and on a broken ankle. Before long, the teenage perfectionist was waving goodbye to her kid brother Warren, boarding the bus to New York and landing jobs in corporate musicals for sales conventions, known in the dancer's trade as industrials. She pirouetted around serval iceboxes for a time before joining the chorus of a subway circuit, Oklahoma, then Broadway's Me and Juliet. The choreographer who hired her shouted, you with the red hair and the legs that start at your shoulders, an offhand remark that crystallised her image as a standout. What came next is the stuff of legend. Carol Haney, star of the hit musical The Pajama Game, suffered her own ankle injury and McLean, by then her understudy, was plucked from the chorus line. When the change was announced to the matinee audience, there was a loud sigh of disappointment, Jerry Lewis recalled. Then Shirley came on and absolutely electrified me and everybody else in the audience. By the final curtain, we were all on our feet, yelling for her to come out again and again. When Haney broke her ankle, McLean took over the role and was discovered by film producer Hal Wallace, who put her under contract. McLean made her movie debut in Alfred Hitchcock's The Trouble with Harry. He instructed the nervous newcomer in Cockney slang, repeating genuine chopper, which translated into real axe, a Hitchcockian way of saying relax. Her unique sexy tomboyish looks and her ability to combine worldly experience with an offbeat innocence caused her to be frequently cast as a good-hearted hooker or waif, for example in such films as Vincent Minnelli's Some Came Running, an adaptation of a James Jones novel and Billy Wilder's The Apartment and Irma La Douce romantic comedies that also starred Jack Lemmon. Her performances in those films earned McLean Academy Award nominations. McLean's offbeat personality and gamine good looks offered a piquant counterpoint to the conformity that dominated American culture in the 1950s. In an era of sex bombs, both foreign and domestic, she was a different weapon altogether, usually playing a kook or free spirit, likely as not to be the victim of her own heart's desire. McLean fast became a hot property, her name on the Hollywood A-list. McLean's film career hummed along under the studio system, shifting from the Paramount lot to Metro Goldwyn Mayer and United Artists. She appeared in 16 films during the 60s. McLean's film work became enriched by her extraordinary life's journey and spiritual discoveries. Her passionate yet nuanced performances in The Turning Point, Being There, Terms of Endearment, the film Terms of Endearment brought a big change to her life, and a strong feud as well. The one she couldn't stand was none other than Deborah Winger. She is best known for her roles in An Officer and a Gentleman. Deborah was born on the 16th of May 1955, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, to Orthodox Jewish parents from the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. She was the only child in the family and had no siblings. Deborah's mother worked as a managing director. Deborah's father was the owner of the luxurious grocery store. When the girl turned five, the family moved to California. Being a high school student, Deborah tried out playing in school performances and, as a result, became interested in art and acting. After graduating, her life has changed drastically. When she was as young as 18, Deborah Winger's life might have taken a different turn. Winger called multiple places home in her youth. She made trips to Israel with her Orthodox Jewish family to visit a kibbutz. Everything about this was rather typical, she claimed, but when she returned to the US, things took a drastically atypical turn. Winger found herself in a car accident that nearly cost her everything. She was left partially paralyzed and blind for almost a year. Medical officials did not expect her to recover and warned Winger she would never regain her vision. The cause of this debilitation can be traced to the cerebral hemorrhage Winger suffered after the crash. Her recovery, however, gave Winger a very long time to reflect and contemplate life as a whole. It was in this time she vowed to pursue a career as an actress if she got better. 
After a long period of treatment, she recovered, dropped out of the college and started attending acting classes. A lot of stars began their career playing in commercial and popular TV shows and Deborah wasn't an exception. As a guest star, she visited a lot of TV projects of the 1970s, including Policewoman, Wonder Woman, where she played Drusilla, Wonder Girl. There is gossip that she has even played a role in the adult movie, being absolutely nude. She prefers to keep silent about it. Winger became famous at the age of 25 when she landed a starring role in Urban Cowboy opposite John Travolta. He was going to appear in this melodrama and a colossal amount of girls applied for the casting. Deborah Winger is a young star with a perfect body and height, 5 foot 5 inches, 163 centimetres, who overshadowed everyone, including Michelle Pfeiffer. After playing in the hot episode where she had to be buck naked, Deborah became a new sex symbol of the United States of America. She got worldwide fame after starring as a daughter, Emma, who has cancer in the film Terms of Endearment. On December 9, 1983, Paramount released Terms of Endearment, an adaptation of Larry McMurtry's 1975 novel and his personal favourite. It follows the tumultuous relationship of Aurora Greenway, Shirley MacLaine, and her daughter, Emma, Deborah Winger, over a 30-year period. Before Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger were cast as mother and daughter, Aurora and Emma, a real-life mum and daughter duo were being considered for the roles. We're sure that the late Janet Lee and her daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis, would have been amazing in the film, but alas, they turned it down. Jodie Foster also turned down the role of Emma because she was at the time studying at Yale University. MacLaine said Winger did weird things to her on set. She dressed in combat boots and a miniskirt. I thought, oh my goodness. In an interview, McLean said while she and Nicholson filmed a post-coital scene, Deborah Winger was under the covers. I didn't know she was going to be there. That kind of tension was going on on the set. Deborah Winger behaved erratically on the set because she was fighting severe cocaine addiction. At one point, she and Shirley McLean got into a shoving match. So Shirley McLean and Deborah Winger did not always get along during the shoot. McLean also later revealed that the film's writer and director James L. Brooks went so far as to encourage their difficult relationship, saying, It was a very tough shoot. Jim likes working with tension on the set. It's a short scene, but it sets a tone for Winger's stretch in the 80s and early 90s as one of the most consistently exciting presences in mainstream American movies. Whether she wants something complicated or something very simple, she's going to get it on her terms without begging and without being afraid to prod if need be. That independent streak in her characters is reflective of her career. Winger attained a reputation as being tough to work with, butting heads with co-stars, directors and executives over the work and usually making the films better in the process. She earned three Academy Award nominations and maintained a status as one of Hollywood's best respected leading actresses from 1980 to 1995 before taking a six-year absence from the screen. Meanwhile, off-screen, a phone call from Marlon Brando helped launch McLean's career as an activist in politics and social causes. As America's cities exploded in violence and the counterculture spread, the movie business began to change and a new era of independent filmmaking came into vogue. McLean looked inward, reflecting on the direction of her life. She wrote about it, producing the first of 12 best-selling memoirs. In book after book for the next 40-plus years, McLean has written unsparingly of her search for meaning, providing material to countless late-night comedians and never minding the jokes, as long as they were funny. She wrote about spirit guides, UFOs, past lives, psychic surgery and the lost city of Atlantis. She recounted living with the Maasai tribe in Africa, fleeing the military rulers of the Himalayan nation of Bhutan, leading a delegation of women to China. When Deborah Winger decided to walk away from Hollywood at the age of 40, she was by no means at a low point in her career. In that time, she moved to New York City to focus on her marriage to actor Arliss Howard and on being a mother. She ended her hiatus in 2001 with the film Big Bad Love, in which she stars alongside her husband Arliss, but she admitted that returning to acting was much harder than leaving. 
The rivalry between the two women, despite all the tensions, is still bittersweet. Shirley MacLaine believes that half her Oscar should belong to Deborah Winger. Both Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger were nominated for the Best Actress Oscar, and despite being the one to walk home with the award, MacLaine believes that it should have been shared between the two leads. On her way to the podium to collect the statuette, MacLaine reportedly whispered to Winger, half of this belongs to you, to which Winger replied, I'll take half. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the relationship between Deborah Winger and Shirley MacLaine? Nevertheless, it is good to see that the conflict between the two is not just about hatred.